What's up, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo. I'm What the Fnu, and I'd like to welcome all of you, whether you are a new viewer or not, to Unfinished, Unfinished Business, Business Month. Month, wherein I will be tackling all of the projects I said I was going to do at one point or another, but never got around to for some reason or another. Now, this game. I said I was going to do a couple years back as part of the 16-bit summer. And I know I said I was originally going to do it blind, but... <laughs> guys, I was not prepared for the sheer amount of bullshit in this game. Woody's face right now pretty much sums up my feelings on the matter. Yeehaw! Yeehaw indeed! Alright, let's just hop on into the options here before we do anything else. Need to set something up. By the way, check this out. Yeah! Some options, right? Just gonna swap that around a little bit. Put the jump and whip and attack buttons on B and Y. That way I can just kind of roll my thumb over. Use, um, what would you even call that? Like the butt of the thumb to kind of hit the button I'll be using the most and the tip of it to be hitting the rest. Anyways, oh, one more thing I want to show off on the main menu here. Help. Huh, what kind of help are they gonna give us? Heh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quite sure what you were expecting from that. Like, maybe a tutorial, like an explanation on all of the moves Woody can use. You know, if the options menu didn't reveal that already. But no, they just show you what the items are. <laughs> Some help, right? Stars are two of the items in the game. You have to be paying attention to whether they're turning one side or another. Which is really going to be prudent when you're bouncing around and dodging obstacles every second, you know what I mean? <laughs> you maniac! You blew it up! What have you done, Buzz? Alright, I can skip this, right? Come on, we all know the story of Toy Story at this point. I, and, well... Well, maybe... I am getting older. Maybe there are plenty of you viewers out there who haven't seen the movie yet. Alright... Every stage in the game follows, loosely follows a scene from the movie. And believe it or not, there is always an explanation for that. Back in the day, by the, by the way, before I get into that, I should probably explain what this game is about. As you saw in the beginning, you've got two moves. You can jump and use your whip, your little pull string on the back of Woody. Now, you can't kill enemies, as you see here. You can wrap them up and stun them, but you can't kill them. Which I guess makes sense, he is just a toy after all, but there is one more move what he has. If you hold up and you press the attack button, you'll see he shoots it up at sort of an angle. This is a very important move. Part of the game will be impossible if you don't know to do this. Now as you notice I just took a hit there from the little pl plane. Some enemies you can't even wrap up, sometimes you can just stun them like that plane there. This plane up here, however, you can't affect at all with your whip. You just kind of have to let it go. So let's free Star... Starge. Sarge and his troops. That's what happens when you try to say two words at the same time, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. You can also crouch and attack, by the way. Now, like I said, there's a reason this game probably ended up not being much like the movie. See, back in the day, movie companies didn't work so closely with the game developers. It was just kind of a cross-promotional thing. This new process that everybody was just kind of getting used to. And the thing is, um, usually they didn't get a full version of the movie to work off of or the script or anything. You just kind of got like a rough outline of what the movie was inevitably going to look like and you worked off of that. So it kind of allowed developers to have a little more cr creative freedom with their games. <laughs> Woody, I love that little dance he does at the end. Woody, you're a cowboy, not an Indian. You can't do a rain dance. Yeah, so just like in the movie... Woody, um, Andy, the kid who owns these toys, is now coming upstairs with his new one he got for his birthday. And red alert, we gotta get everybody back where they belong in the time limit before he comes up here and realizes everything's alive. Now this stage can either be really fun or really annoying depending on how you handle doing it. You gotta move everything in just the right way at just the right time. Free all of those guys there. Come back over to the left again. Now you're trying to pump everybody up into the toy box here. 
find yourself getting bored while you're waiting, you could just kind of dance around a little bit. There he is. Oh! No! Get... Oh! Now I gotta wait for him. Now I really have nothing to do while I'm just sitting here. <laughs> just screw around with the character's animations a little bit. Huh. There we go. Now I can move on to the next section. Luckily, they give you plenty of time in this part. By the way, you can't jump up there. It looks like I can, but you just barely can't make it. Grab some more stars. Grab as many stars as you can in every single level. There is a purpose to collecting them. If you get, I think it's 300, you get a continue. And if you grab... If you grab a certain number on every single stage, you'll also get points for that. You'll get, like, extra hits. You'll get, like, health restored and extra lives. Things like that. RC, what are you doing? You're just hurting yourself, man. Like, I've heard of banging your head against a brick wall, but this is ridiculous. And, of course, um... Oh, jeez. I, I never figured out if he's supposed to be an actual toy or not, because I know a lot of these guys were based on actual Hasbro toys, like Mr. Potato Head, the Piggy Bank. I think RC was also one that was around for, for a while before the movie was made. Uh, don't correct me on... Well, you can correct me on that if you want. I might be wrong on that. But, um... Yeah. I know it's not Stretch Armstrong. I had one of those. He looks different than that. Mm. Anyways, end of that stage. Now, Buzz Lightyear to the rescue! Everybody's favorite character from the movie, right? So now we got another level that's very, very loosely based on the movie. We're trying to... Pr Woody's trying to prove that Buzz isn't all that he's cracked up to be. Kind of proving that he's just a toy. The way this level is set up, it's... It presents itself like a race... But in actuality, it's nothing of the sort. You can go through here as slowly as you want. And I recommend you go through slowly, because you've got all of this crap coming up from the bottom of the room trying to kill you. You move too quickly, it might just destroy you. See? I almost got nailed right there by that shark. It's a good thing I've been playing through this a couple times. Make sure you nab every single checkpoint here. This is where it starts getting kind of difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, cocky son of a bitch. Oh, you like that? You like that? <laughs> See, that's the thing. You may have noticed in the beginning, this game was made by both Traveler's Tales and Psychosis. Now, both very interesting game companies that I'd like to cover a little more in the future on my other series on this channel, RTGs. They've made some fantastic games that haven't really gotten enough attention, in my opinion. And I so. <laughs> well, there's a sight gag only a 90s kid would really appreciate. There it is again! Oops. Yeah, luckily, those aren't insta kill pits down there. You can hit them and still just take damage. By the way, I'm just warning you right now. I have no idea how to get past this part of the game without doing this. Yep. Grab that life while I've still got the invincibility frames. Swing off. Dang it! I always, without fail, get nailed by that plane every single time I play this level. You just don't even see it coming. You don't have time to prepare. By the way, check this out. I know it looks like I'm using the whip strategically there, like I've got the timing down. I'm just holding the button. Oh, shit! <laughs> looks like I'm gonna have to hold the button again, because I'm not paying attention. What I was trying to do was reach the edge of the platform there so I could whip that clown and maybe give myself a little extra leeway there. Oh, I forgot to go back and grab the extra life. Because the lives come back after you after you die. All of the icons you could pick up, like extra health and whatnot. <sighs> Try to avoid taking a hit from one source. You end up getting damaged from another. Aren't old school platformers great? This is a very... Yeah, tra um, Traveler's Tales and Psychosis both did amazing work. It's why this game has so many little goofy visual cues in it, all these cool little nods. It's why everything is so accurate and why the animation is so damn good. 
they're also... Well, I was about to say where they were the guys that worked on guitar on Gunstar Heroes, but I know that's not true. That was, um... That was Treasure. Yeah, another company that had a T in its name. Ah, uh, too short of an extra life. That's heartbreaking. If you grab at least 50 on one stage, you get an extra life. I don't know what the threshold is for extra health, which is what I got right there. I think it might be 40 or so. Don't quote me on that. I think 50 is the most you can get in any particular stage. While, yeah, so I guess it's kind of an extra reward there. So it's kind of like Mario, where you need a certain number of coins or just generic collectibles to you get something impressive. But you need to get them all in a single stage, so that's kind of interesting. Here Here's another scene from the movie that... Well, that wasn't in the movie Here that they just kind of added into the game. But it makes sense, all things considered. Like, Woody comes. would be having a nightmare about this. There is a scene where he's, like, sleeping in the toy box. Here it comes. So if he was going to be dreaming about anything, it would be this guy just trying to kill him with real lasers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Luckily, he's kind of an easy boss. You just have to wipe out his shields with your uh, pull string in the beginning. And boom, you're done with that. So, considering we got past one boss fight, I think that's going to be the end of this video. I'm going to try to keep them short this time around, because this game isn't very long at all. So, next time on Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo, we'll be continuing on with the adventure and seeing how Woody deals with this new toy, ruling the toy box, if you will. Until then, I'm What the Fnu. See you later, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot how awesome Woody's face is in this cutscene. He has that perfect evil genius look about him. The eyebrows, the smile, the way his eyes are half closed, that's genius. He has that perfect, like, <laughs> look about him. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so a buzz clip. This is actually one of the more difficult stages in the entire game. Don't believe me? Look at what the setup is here. You're driving RC through like a maze of toys in Andy's room. By the way, if you haven't noticed in the other stages, Andy's room seems to be a lot, even if we're looking at it from the perspective of, of a small toy, Andy's room seems to be a lot bigger in this game than it is in the movie. Oh shit. Oh, I, oh, I majorly screwed that up. I don't even know if I'm gonna finish the stage now. You might have noticed this already, but the thing about this stage is you're driving RC around and he controls very awkwardly. Like, his his handling, he turns quickly enough, but you really got to get used to it. I, I don't know how to describe it. It's slippery, I guess you could say, because he turns really quickly, but you're you have to be gentle with it. It's both stiff and slippery at the same time. He turns quickly, but if you don't turn enough, he he just goes back to a position he was in before. You also have to drive really slowly, because if you slam directly into a wall, he'll go spinning out, and it'll take you a while to get proper control back again. Oh, jeez. You'll also notice in the bottom right corner that I'm slowly running out of battery power, and I keep having to find Buzz and hit him so I can collect more batteries and keep myself going. This is kind of an aggravating mechanic because, like I said before, if you hit a wall, you spin out and it takes a while for you to regain control. Like that. Oh, but I managed to hit the last one there. It, it takes a while. You will lose. You will fail that thing quite a few times before you get it. Well, I guess it isn't 40. Or maybe I just have five hits already, because I notice that sometimes. Sometimes they won't give you health if you already have the maximum amount of it. So maybe that's what happened there. So yeah, now that the toys have realized that Woody tried to sabotage one of them, or basically murder him by throwing him out the window, now they're all trying to go after him. This is kind of a fun stage in that sense. Because now you've got... I always like it when you tr when you get to see the unique powers of all the characters around you, even the side ones. And that's kind of what this stage is all about, is you've got 
all of the toys around here are, are combining their powers, basically, to get revenge on Woody for what he's done. Which brings up an interesting point. This is something I thought was really interesting when I was a kid. You don't see many children's movies where the main good guy, quote-unquote, the main character, is actually kind of a bastard. In the beginning, Woody is really... He's jealous, he's um, conniving, he legitimately tried to murder somebody around him because he wasn't the center of attention anymore. It's a very sort of dark tale. I was kind of shocked by it when I was a kid. Just that whole situation. It was very interest. It was very interesting, and it made the movie a lot more compelling because I didn't feel like I had seen this story already. Well, maybe I wasn't that cynical when I was a kid, but still. Uh oh. Potato head. You have no idea how long I've wanted to do this. In your face, or lack thereof. <laughs> yeah, I. I Let's be honest here. Potato Head deserved every bad thing that happened to him in that film. <laughs> Woody may have been a bastard, but Potato Head was just a douchebag. <laughs> Wrap you up. Uh, let's move on with this. Whoa! I gotta be careful here. I think I've... Jeez. Okay, something I gotta address here. Every single balloon I've burst open so far, you've noticed it's dropped these, like, gray balls. Those are ball bearings, and they hurt you if you touch them, even if they're already on the ground, and they're just kind of bouncing around a little bit. When I was a kid, I saw this game in Nintendo Power, and they promised, oh yeah, the balloons can have anything in them. They could have stars, they could have health, they could even have extra lives. That is a flat-out lie. I have never encountered a single balloon ever that had anything but ball bearings in it. It's ridiculous. I don't know if- fuck. I don't know if the random number generator is just skewed in this game, or maybe I'm just extremely unlucky, but it's just- it's a little disconcerting that I've encountered nothing but danger in any of those balloons. I don't even bother breaking them open most of the time, simply because they're just not worth it. They don't do anything for me. Here we go, and now we escape the room with Rex. Ah, uh, but the escape has only begun. For now, we move on to the next stage. Oh, how I hate confrontations. <laughs> Seriously, that's the only explanation for why he wasn't trying to get rid of you as well. He hates confrontations. And by helping him get across the room, he has now completely forgotten that you tried to kill one of his friends, and he's gonna help you escape. I wonder what the politics behind this are. Like, if everybody just accepts that Rex is the way he is, and he does these kinds of things. Or, whoa! Almost lost my only hit there. Yeah, look at how big you are! Look at how much of the screen you take up. This stage can be ridiculously hard just because it's so difficult to see where you're going. Or see what's w waiting you forward in the stage. Whoa! Come on, let me hit the checkpoint. Let me hit the checkpoint. Where's the damn checkpoint? Boom. Crap! Woo! Just in time. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, jeez. Yep. Not today. Not today. <sighs> Even RC is trying to kick our ass after what we made him do. It's like you put my battery life on the line so you could get your own petty revenge scheme. How could you, Woody? How could you? Wow, did I just beat that? <whistles> Not bad. Not bad at all. Too bad I'm not going to have any kind of success like that with our next stage here. Now we're up to the scene where Woody and Buzz fight. Well, the first time they fight, let's say, hand to hand. Now, literally what it says here, stay out of Buzz's way as you try and tire him out. Tire him out, I wonder what they mean by that. 
Oh, they mean hit him with an actual tire. Clever. Oh, oh, Traveler's Tales. You so punny. Oh, this move. Okay, this move that Buzz is doing right now where he's just kind of bouncing around, this thing is extremely hard to dodge if you don't know what you're doing. You have to wait for him to be like close to the top of the screen for that thing to register. And this tire, this thing is your weapon in this battle. And yet, no matter what, I can't seem to get this thing to work consistently. It just kind of bounces whenever it wants to. Like, I can hit it up multiple times, but trying to get it to... Aw, oh, crap, I'm dead. Yep. <laughs> there was no way out of that one. That thing has a much bigger hitbox than you think it does. Like, oh, come on. I touched his sprite. That should be enough. That passed over him. This is nonsense. You gotta wait till he's all the way up in the air before you try to sneak underneath him. You also have to count how many times he's bounced so that you don't end up just kind of... He goes back to the same spot on the screen every time he's... Every time he's done with that move. So he'll automatically gravitate towards that spot again once he's done with this move. So if you're trying to go underneath him, you might accidentally walk back into his path again. See? He's just kind of flying back to the right here. It's It takes such a long time to get used to. Shit! Shit! He touched me with his pinky toe! That thing has such a ridiculously large hitbox. It's nuts! There we go. Alright, three hits left and I have four. I'm just kind of have to keep things balanced out here. There we go. Alright, get back to your spot. Jerk. D attack! Become a weapon, please! Even if you use that up move that I was talking about earlier, not even that triggers it consistently. It triggers it sometimes, but not consistently. It's up to you whether or not you want to go after all of these stars. Frankly, I think it's not worth it most of the time because you just kind of have to focus on keeping yourself alive. Jeez! Which is easier said than done sometimes, I must admit. There we go. <laughs> so much for that. 44 stars, and even that isn't enough for an extra hit. Well, I guess that's going to be it for this episode, guys. So, please join me next time for let's for more Let's Play Toy Story for the Super Nintendo when we will see what happens next in the story between Buzz and Woody. Until then, I'm with the Fnoo. See you later.